Darwin's pharmacy. He says, dreams do not lack reality. They are real patterns of information. Or when the imaginary foundation says that the role of human imagination is to conceive of all these delightful futures, choose the most amazing and exciting and ecstatic possibility, and then pull the present forward to meet it. That is what we do. We, we bring our imaginings into existence, but I think that as technology has advanced, we have found ways to outsource our mental capacities to our tools so much more. Our ability to manipulate the physical world has increased in an exponential fashion, so we've been able to shrink the lag time between our imaginings and their instantiation in the real world. David Deutsch speaks in his new book, The Beginning of Infinity. He says, if you look at the topography of the island of Manhattan today, that topography is a topography in which the forces of economics and culture and human intent have trumped the forces of geology. I mean, the topography of Manhattan today is no longer shaped by mere geology. It's shaped by the human mind and by economics and by culture. So what David Deutsch extrapolates is that ultimately that will be the fate of the whole universe. He says gravitation and antimatter might only shape the universe at its earliest and least interesting stages, but eventually the whole entire thing will be subject to the intent of substrate independent, infinitely more powerful minds. And to conceive of that, it makes me feel ecstatic. Well, I love the I love the vision, but what about uh, what about the argument that machines, computers, dehumanize learning? Well, as a matter of fact, it's just the reverse. Uh, it seems to me that it's through this machine that, for the first time, we'll be able to have a one-to-one -one relationship between information source and information consumer. He says that man is the point the point at which evolution has. Has, has sort of become self-aware and now can accelerate the process of evolutionary complexity, complexification. So um, evolution now, because it's self-directed, has itself evolved. So evolution has evolved with us. And what technology is, is again, a smarter, more efficient way for the system to move towards its complexification. And maybe the destiny of, of mankind is to ultimately transcend entropy. So it's not about like yin and yang, but rather about like life, just completely overwhelming and subsuming. I'm privy to a creative inspiration or divine madness or that kind of connection with something larger than ourselves and it makes us feel like we understand the intelligence that runs throughout the universe and somehow has led to self-organizing molecules that turn into self-aware creatures and then start to find their own origins. We are connected to something bigger and grander than we are or that maybe perhaps we are a part of. If we are the cosmos into itself and the cosmos is speaking through us, you know, so I do think that, 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 that we're all receivers. To be human today is, is to wear an exoskeleton called a car that allows us to cruise at a certain speed. I mean, an exoskeleton known as a rocket that allows us to go to space. I mean, these are like suits that we put on, but it's still us. I mean, that's us. It's all us. At some point in the last 50,000 years, evolution itself evolved. It created biological organisms that were self-aware. How do you know other animals aren't self-aware? Actually, it's really easy to tell. Because when self-aware organisms exist, they start accelerating their own evolution. What humans do is they walk around in reality, pick up less organized matter, and 
put it together in increasingly complex ways that are beneficial to their own complexity. A lot of people walking around today with really profound ideas, really intelligent people think that humans will constantly evolve and become better through this mental thing that we come up with, but that is not true. Humans are not going to get better. Humans are going to stop evolving. We're going to continue to be exactly the way we are forever. A slime mold is this uncategorizable form of life that I think in its own microcosm represents exactly what life is. That's a colonial organism and has millions or billions of free-floating nuclei. The way that it moves or does anything or you know gets food is what it does is it sends out these millions of microscopic tentacles in every direction looking for a better environment, looking for someplace new. What it does is it extends outward even if it is happy in the place that it is because it can only survive by extending outward. And ultimately, 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 it can only reproduce with itself. On, on the complete whole, not on the sense of each individual nuclei, it can only reproduce with itself if it meets another slime mold. We have bacteria, insects, plants, deer, or in the core of the slime mold. Humans are the nuclei in the tentacles that are extending outward into empty space, into voids, to find out what's there and bring back whatever is worthwhile. The bridge that man is between biological evolution and neurological evolution, when that bridge is complete, ideas, memes, uh, machines, technology, artificial intelligence, self-aware artificial intelligence, when that becomes the new, the new branching off point, and humans forever, basically, remain in the same spot that they are, inhabiting that same sort of consciousness. Rocks are still rocks, insects are insects, plants are plants, and deer are deer. They have found their niche, and what they are is they represent a particular floor in consciousness. That, that part of the slime mold that remains as a solid, necessary thing that all higher parts of the slime mold depend on. We too will become part of that. Our destiny is to become integrated into the core of the slime mold and to watch our children grow and blossom outwards toward infinity. self-aware existence 